Hey, it's Bob Self from Baby Tattoo Books. You're watching Toy Geeks Behind the Counter. Scratch, scratch, scratch. <laughs> Buckle. Do better, don't you? Damn it. The jack. <laughs> we all right? We good? Well, I have to like sit on both chairs until the you gas comes up. You want me to scoot over a little this uh, way too? It makes me no. You're ruining everything. What do you mean? It's good this way. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look, look. We're here. Now you're out of your frame over there. Ah, oh, god damn. You gotta do stuff. Why you Get out of my frame over here. I'm over here. Yeah, I'm now you're over here. <laughs> Nobody wants you. Get your own he, camera. Me, 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 him, him, him. What? Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Toy Geeks Behind the Counter. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Ben. I'm George. And I'm Jack. Hey, hey. welcome, everyone, to uh, another great episode. This is episode 40. 40. 40. We made it. Yeah. Over the hill. That's it. All right, we've got some great stuff we to talk really about. We really failed. We should have bought an over-the-hill balloon for today. Oh, we should have. Could have had all black Somebody on. could have sent us like a happy 40th card. You just want people to send you stuff. We all walk in with canes. Just a card, maybe. <laughs> walk in with canes? That's what's always in the That's party store. That's what you store. do when you're 40? In the party store. It's always like canes, black balloons, and over-the-hill things. Tombstones and... I can't wait to turn 40. Yeah, me too. What like, about you, George? I was depressed before. Oh, see what I did there? <laughs> oh. See what I did there? I don't Anyways. remember it. We have got a uh, great episode, but first we have to mention our October Artist of the Month. We're still in October, and that's Doc A, everyone. Doctor A. Doctor A. Is it Doc A or Doctor A? I yes. call him Doc A. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, <laughs> anyway if, you, if you haven't checked him out, go He's ahead and check cool it out. Stuff. And um, we we also have an event to mention. Ooh. Aside from Designer Con. Oh. So we are here. Wait, what's designer con? Oh, don't get me. Anyway, we're here in beautiful Glendale, Burbank, adjacent California, in the 3D Retro Store. And sometimes the store has events. Well, on October 21st, we're going to have another event here with the one, the only, Alex Pardee. Nice. We're I like gonna, him. Yeah, we're going to be releasing a special color edition of his astronaut figure. This one's going to be called the Darkness Edition. I wish we could, like, look at it. We're, we're going to look at it. What? Later in the episode, we're actually going to review it. So we're going to take a look at this uh, awesome figure and review it. And then you can get it October 21st here. And he'll sign it for you and everything. And they It'll can be, come to the counter. They can come to this. The sticky, disgusting, it's brown, It's not sticky and disgusting, disgusting counter. Just sometimes. George, how gross is this counter? I don't touch it. I put paper down. <sighs> it's not <laughs> gross. <laughs> it's so disgusting. But they can come to the store. <laughs> and then I may be here. Are you going to be here? Probably, yeah. All right. I haven't looked at my calendar yet. I don't even know. This the Kevin already said, I can't make it. Oh, the Kevin's been whatever, man. He's been MIA. Anyway. It doesn't matter. He's, <laughs> he's out in the desert still. <sighs> Speaking of other toy geeks, we actually, uh, before we start on our rant, huh? we have some special... Stuff from Jack-Jack. Uh, it's another spotlight. A uh, spotlight. Let's do it. Take it away, Jack-Jack. Hey, guys. This is Jack from Vinyl Pulse, and I'm back with another toy spotlight, number three, uh, if you're counting. But really, it's kind of number one because we have a first. This is the first time we've reviewed and sort of cast a spotlight on a brand new unreleased toy. Turn it the right way, Jack. Anyway, uh, this is Baffle Maniac by Marta Ontiveros, uh, Portland-based artist and Toy Art Gallery. And of course, they're based right here in Los Angeles. 
Uh, a lot of Martin's work is music inspired, um, sometimes a lot of it heavy metal, and you can certainly see that here. And in fact, if you're a heavy metal fan, you're thinking that's Baphomet. Yes, this is Baphomet, uh, the Wicked or something like that. Uh, it's a powerful satanic kind of occult image, but really associated in pop culture terms with heavy metal. Um, bands like Slayer and others have used various versions and incarnations of Baphomet uh, on you know, merch from t-shirts to posters. To, I'm pretty sure he's graced a couple album covers as well, or maybe more than a couple. Um, this is Martin's version of that uh, powerful image. Uh, the head is pretty classic Baphomet. Um, he's got the flayed horns. It's a winged demon, demonic goat. It's got the flayed horns, but it also has this um, sort of rook castle style um, headpiece in the middle, which is pretty common. And certainly it was part of the classic, um, you know, um, imagery from the late 1800s that kind of started the whole sabbatic goat concept. Um, and started Baphomet's kind of like satanic run, as it were. Um, but the, from the neck down, it really is classic Martin. Uh, you know, you've got the embedded face with a double set of eyes, uh, and the eyes are really, really signature Martin, part of his aesthetic. You know, they're kind of like the flat, wide eyes with the crimped ends. Um, the, the mouth is pretty classic as well, with a flat mouth. Um, narrow with a jagged teeth. Um, so even if you're not uh, a heavy metal fan and never heard of Baphomet or don't know what a sabbatic goat is like myself, um, it's just really cool. Like the sculpting is really neat. It's got that really focused uh, sort of rugged goat head. Um, it's just pretty neat. So I think it stands on its own. It has this kind of mystical quality to it. So whether you're you know, heavy metal fan, which is a plus really. It's like, oh cool, it's Martin's version of Baphomet. Uh, that's pretty cool. But even if you're not, it's just kind of like a cool, quirky, mystic creature with a really nice sculpt. So that's, you know, win either way. Um, it has four points of articulation. You might be thinking, wait, it's five, right? Um, no, I can still count. Uh, it really doesn't, the head doesn't really move. It's got a kind of a flat, oval neck, it really would need to be much more circular. It does have two arms that move, which are pretty cool. Whoops. And it's got something super awesome. It's got these wings that you can move around, uh, that articulate. Uh, and I'm not sure why I'm so fascinated with these wings. It's definitely one of the reasons why I dig this, dig this toy. I think it's because you really don't see very many toys with individually sculpted wings, you know, apart from the body. Sometimes it's molded into the body's texture, but that just isn't as cool. It adds a nice 3D element. And really, I think there's just some novelty of movable wings. I dig it a lot. Uh, so props to Martin and Tag and sculptor David Arshowski for making my wing dreams come true. That's pretty dope. Um, this is a seven and a half inch soft final figure. When is it coming? I'm not really quite sure. I could say any day now, but that's a little cliche. Let's just say uh, within a few weeks or a month at the outside. Um, but it's coming, you know, really imminently. So keep an eye on Tag's Instagram and Martin's Instagram. That's down here somewhere or over there. Uh, and I will see you guys next time on another Spotlight. Again, this is Baphomaniac by Martin Oniveros and Toy Art Gallery. Rock on. <laughs> that was heavy, man. That is that word again. <laughs> is there something wrong with Earth? Gravitational <laughs> pull in the future? All right, let's get this episode started. We, Finally. We Ugh. have a really special guest. Ooh. Really all special. All of the guests are really special. special. But this one's real, apparently really ah. special. Well, I mean, they're all special. Let's bring them in. Les Shetko. Hey! hey. Da -da -da. Uh, What's up, fellas? 
Ta -da! How you doing, man? Good. See, how you doing? You got like an intro and everything. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome tattoos. First of all, I just looked at this. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I thank met you? you like an hour ago. <laughs> and, like, I didn't even get to see this. What's going on? They here? don't wash off. Do they go all the way? No, it's. Do they stop here? Yeah, they go all the way up. Dude. Yeah. We're gonna have to take your shirt off later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna have to get a waiver from the wife. How you doing, Les? I'm good. I'm good. So, who are you? What are you doing here? Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a designer, uh -huh. nerd. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, would you call yourself a toy geek? I would. I well, would. then you are in the right spot. I would, yeah. Right, right here. Yeah. How else? How else are you involved in the toys? You know, don't be shy. You can tell us. Um, yeah. I designed some toys. I've designed a few toys. Um, yeah, collect toys, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, you say design toys, do you mean for the designer toy scene, or do you mean for the mass market toy scene, or both? Or for both? Uh, I'd say more for the t designer toy scene, but most of the stuff that I've done, well, all the stuff that I've done, is all sort of had a licensing oh. attachment to it. So there's nice. that aspect of that. So for people who don't know what you do, like me. <laughs> what would be what would be some of the things that I would have seen of yours? Uh, I've I have done no idea. Some, uh, the first toy that I did was while I was working with Disney, and it was a Mickey uh, that MindStyle produced, and it was a little different than how I designed it, but it came out in conjunction with the Manny Pacquiao figure. So it was oh, like yeah. this. Oh, I've uh, seen that one. Yeah. Promoters of Peace is what they called it, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so that was. Uh, about 2008 and then later on after I left Disney I did some Transformers uh, I do a lot of work with Hasbro now so Transformers G.I. Joe were some things that I've done and I have done a Felix the Cat and I've done uh, some more Transformers recently nice beautiful did you were you did you go to school for this or how did you get into designing for so companies I, like this I used to own a record store and um, I was always interested in design, and then I just, this is, you know, G3 days, you know, and I <laughs> bought a G3, and I got a cracked copy of Illustrator and Photoshop, <laughs> and That's literally how it just, how do I make a circle? Like, uh, like I literally didn't know how to, like, make a perfect circle. I had to, like, call my friend that was a little more versed in Illustrator, like, nice. it's like, hold shift down and pull, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. And now we all know. Yeah, it was like, oh, this is amazing, and then... Um, Sort of from there, and then my shop closed, and I, my, I got my first corporate gig at Disney, and I've been designing ever since. Nice. Wow, that's cool. Awesome. Well, let's look at some toys if you're down for toys. it. Toys. Let's do it. Toys. Let's uh, we'll start with first one. thing we have here is a little toy called Mr. Pennybags. You know anything about this toy, Les? I designed that one. <laughs> you designed <laughs> this toy. <laughs> <laughs> nice to that. You did that. Forgot All that, that guy. Stuff. Forgot this guy. Yeah. You guys pre-planned toys? Is that no, what? Because no, last random. week that was uh, <laughs> completely random. random. Last completely week was random. random. Just put, no, completely random. Do you have anything to do with uh, box art and all that too, or so, do you yeah, do you I, only? this I I do like Let's packaging, so I did do the design for the oh. packaging on that. Um, so I this is this is from Bait, as you can tell on the little on some of the uh, accessories, and um, it's funny because <laughs> do you know an artist by the name of Alec Monopoly? Heard of the guy? Heard of the guy? Yeah. When I first saw this, Alec Monopoly uses the Monopoly man in a lot of his stuff, and that's actually where his artist name comes from. But he always wears a bandana, yes. which you can put that on him. And, this thing's amazing. And a lot of people think that this is an Alec Monopoly toy. So, <laughs> what do you say about that? There's a reason <laughs> why you cut the say? this came with a bandana. Okay. So. One of the things I do is I help companies like Hasbro find different partners that are sort of outside of their normal sphere of business. Mm -hmm. And one of the projects that I set up was a Monopoly Times Crooks and Castles project. Oh. So that streetwear brand Crooks and Castles. Um, Very popular They brand. They use the, the Medusa head with the bandana a lot. Yep. So this toy was actually designed originally for that project. It oh. got shelved. And uh, later on, when I started working with Bait, I hit up my boy Eric and was like, let's, let's do the Monopoly Man. He was like, okay. And, and since it was done, <laughs> it, was it, already done. it came with the bandana. So 
it was sort of happenstance and you know it made more sense you know with the bandana you know with the crooks uh piece attached to it but i love it like, i think bandana. it still works with the whole you know robert baron sort of aspect yeah. of it you know so so this one goes for fifty dollars there's a couple of different versions that they released at different cons i personally love the original edition the best there's another version that's similar to this but it's all gray tones it's has not come out yet, so spoiler alert. Mm. <laughs> Maybe on some <laughs> future show. Like Decon. So do you work at Hasbro? No, I just You're work just on a no contractual there. Okay. basis with them. So we really can't have you review this toy because you made it. <laughs> it's the best toy ever made in no. the history of toys. <laughs> now let me, let me ask you something. In terms of like, you do a lot of the design. Are you involved in the actual like process of production? Like do you approve the sculpt? Do you approve the initial paint samples. Do you do that or are you like, here's the design, here's what it should look like, I'm done? Uh, I do have hands in a, a lot of the, the production along the way. I'm not the sole guy, but I do get notes and I'll give notes on, on the, the sculpt. Like there, even this went through a few renditions. We had to make the hat a little bit smaller. Um, the reason I ask is because I've, I've talked to a lot of people, probably you have too, George, that have like, They've been in the initial process, and they're like, "Oh wow, it's done! I haven't seen it yet." Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like they they've done the drawings, they've done the like three D sculpting, they've picked out the colors and everything, but they've never seen the paint samples, they've never seen the box, they've never seen the final product. That definitely happens. I mean, and, uh, there's a lot of things that I haven't seen, you know, until the end. Like even the the box that I did, there was a few variations that changed for whatever reason. But I mean, for the most part, everything is almost the same. Uh, this one, you know, I just did a few changes, like where I wanted his little crow's feet to actually be embossed in the toy versus originally they had it painted, painted. and I just didn't that like the paint. That looks awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there have been toys in the past where I'm like. What is that box? Like I, I don't. I have, <laughs> what is that? You know. Or there's been other changes, like where the first Mickey I did, where the shorts were completely changed, where I had them ri originally in like cutoff shorts, so it was a little more jagged oh, in a cartoon wow. sense, and the toy came out flat. The nose was different. And, you know, so those things are always like kind of bummers when you get those as a, desi as a designer. You're just like that's. Uh, but it, sometimes it's just the production company or whoever's producing it has to cut corners or do certain things or meet Whatever the reason is, yeah. There's, you know, especially if you're dealing with licensed product, you're dealing with um, brand management that's like, no, you can't do the nose like that or you can't do X like this or whatever it right. is and you have to follow or their you guidelines. You can't have them wearing this, you have to have them wear this. Well. For sure. Awesome. George, you got something I actually us. brought these minifigures in because I saw them at Target and I really like them. These have nothing to do with our guests, sorry. <laughs> 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 um, but these are, they're, they're a line called Basher Science, and it's for teaching children about science. And oh, they actually okay. have, not only do they have minifigures of these, here you can open it up, nice. they also have play sets. So there's like, um, a ro like a little rocket ship that you put on a base and it teaches kids that air can force the rocket to go in the air. Or So like the kid bashes the little piece and it shoots the rocket into the so air. So they're like little science projects. So it's all little science projects. That's amazing. And each of these minifigures are based on different science elements. Like this is gold. Um, this is one of the... Um, Rocks and minerals. Rocks and minerals sets. It's like two ninety nine for a minifigure. And then amazing. Like yeah. it's twenty bucks for the big kit and like fourteen for the mini kits and like it's yeah, they're really great. It's on the end cap in Target. It's it's hard to find. It's not really like advertised anywhere. They should be everywhere. It's a really great set. It's near the Rube Goldberg sets, if you've seen those out at Target now. No. Um, but these are like it's science toys for kids. They but they're made by Mattel. Target. Yeah. So this so is a Mattel brand. And it's series one. Cards included are compatible with our game packs. But there's a whole bunch of minis. And there's wow. you can buy them singles like this. I think they have three packs. Each one of the big sets comes with an exclusive little mini in it. So if you're into collecting minifigures like I am, good luck. <laughs> yeah, because these are awesome. I love gold. <laughs> Again, <laughs> <laughs> come on! How is that your favorite two, movie? Two episodes. It's not in even the best of the Austin Power series, and that's the one you quote the most. My come Vinky. On. <laughs> you see, you see, it's good. It's good. Anyway, well, Hello, thanks, sir. These are awesome. Hello, Faja. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. All right, All right moving on. Let's move on to back to designer toys. Back to designer toys. We have a new toy from uh, our friend uh, Scott Tolson. Who? And, you know, come on. 
That guy who's been in the episodes and they're the, like nine episodes. Uh, he has made a new <laughs> eight-inch dunny with uh, the good people at Kid Robot. You know Kid Robot, right? I heard of that. Um, and it's called King Howie. Just in time for Halloween. Open it, open it. All so right, this right. is from the Odd Ones, right? The mini, there was a mini three inch mm -hmm. in the Odd One series, and then they blew it up. Oh, oh wow. That's right. Look at those colors. It's really nice. That is amazing. I remember that when they released the mini series, like, he was one of the most sought after characters. Well, because well, Cthulhu. Yeah, it's Cthulhu. How do you say it? Cthulhu. 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 I always thought it was Chutlu. Cthulhu. Hmm. I've heard Cthulhu, I've heard Cthulhu. Ben's friend says Cthulhu, Cthulhu and he does this. Cthulhu, when he does Don't it. Don't ever do that Get again. a close-up of that. Cthulhu. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't leave. We're sorry. We're sorry. Oh. So it looks like also uh, Kid Robot has their own exclusive color of this as well. This one retails for eighty. Okay. And it looks like the purple one retails for eighty-five. So is it shelf worthy? I think it's shelf worthy. I think, I think it's so. shelf worthy too. Scott, Is yes, it? fine. I'll let Yay! it be shelf worthy. <laughs> Are we gonna do it? <laughs> shelf worthy. Come on, you know, every Scott. time you do shelf worthy, you go like this. <laughs> you look like a like a South Park character. You You're like, hello, children. Jazz hands. <laughs> Jazz yeah, you do do something else this time. Hello, children. Do something else. Me? Yeah. Next time. All right. Next time. Wh why? What's wrong with? All right. Fine. It's What's fine. wrong with it's that? It's fine. Moving on. Oh, Taking this home. Woohoo! I'm gonna say I'm gonna do this one. All right, all right. It's time for some blind boxes. Uh, this is uh, oh, this is an awesome set. Nick Collodia collectible do, do, vinyl do, figures do, from do, the '90s. All your favorite Nick tunes from the '90s. We've got our monsters, uh, Rugrats, ah, real monsters. Hey, our real monsters. Hey Arnold, Ren and Stimpy, SpongeBob, and what's the Beaver one? Ah, there's something with Joe the Beaver. Don't Joe the Beaver. I want. <laughs> that's a terrible one. I hate that one. I don't even want to. <laughs> you got look the at one it. from the Beaver. I. That's what I want. I want Rocko's. Rocko's oh, modern man. life. That's I'll another one. I'll trade you. Rocko's. Oh, I got a terrible one too. Oh, why that? did you guys all get terrible ones? I hope I don't get a terrible one. Dude, I got the best one. Look, you got you the did. all monsters. No, from from Rocko. I'm trading. No, I wish sure. I. Could, I wish I could have gotten a Ren or Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> so, what do you think? What do you think? These are ten dollars. Oh, that's too much. What? Come on. Blind box, ten bucks. Seven ninety nine. Really? That two dollar difference is gonna kill you. MSRP. <laughs> that's what the MSRP is. You don't know what it's like to own a store. You don't know what. <laughs> seven ninety nine. Get them at three retro for seven ninety nine. Tell them I sent you. <laughs> they are nine ninety nine. That's what the price is. What's wrong with nine nine? These are great. The paint is great. The li you know the licensing fees on these? What is the guest Tell say? them about the licensing fees. 12%. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So do you like these? I'm not a blind box fan personally, to be honest. Like To drop Ooh. 10 bucks on something that... You, you might get that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I have a, you know, I, I have a seven-year-old at home and we've got him a lot of the you know blind boxes and he's always bummed because he always gets like oh, the one he doesn't oh, want that's so sad and that's horrible if your little boy opened it up and got that dumb girl figure yeah. for You'd 10 bucks that's it. like your that's and your parents dropping another 10 bucks on another blind box to get to a hope better he's one. getting the other and then he gets that sure. guy with the orange <laughs> <mustache>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you're like forget it 20 bucks for that too yeah. oh that's a lot of therapy all right so um we talked the about badge. that there's going to be an event here at the store. Um, Decon so is in Pasadena. Tell us more about the event. Okay, so Alex Pardee, an amazing artist. If you guys haven't looked up his art, you should. Um, he's done some great stuff. This is a figure that he produced with Toy Cube. And they've released, I think, already three different colors. All of them have sold out. There was the original. There was like a white version. Uh, and then some some other version which I'm forgetting. But this one is a color that I worked with uh, with Alex and Toy Cube, and I wanted to make something very like dark and Halloween and glow, and that's what we did here. We're gonna have food trucks. Alex is gonna be here signing, which is great because he was actually living out in the West Coast for a long uh, on the East Coast for a long time, and now he's back on the West. What time is it? It is happening October 21st from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. 
And you can come here and Alex has also said that he is going to be bringing a couple of surprises because along with the figure, he's going to be creating a capsule of possible t-shirts, oh prints, and other fun things to go along with this amazing figure that you can only get here. At can we see the figure? Show. Yes, let's do it. You're talking. You're always talking. I talk and talk and talk. Uh, Is it going to look like it. the picture? You open it. So how many, <laughs> <laughs> how many did you guys do of these? Um, I believe we made something like 100. A little more than 100 oh, pieces, wow. I believe. Will it look like the figure? Find it's out. Heavy. It is, it is uh, resin. Polystone. Polystone, yeah. Okay, so don't drop it. Yeah. <laughs> Because especially the hands. That's one amazing. Wow. Isn't that great? That's right. Look at the colors on that. Super red. How? What? Yeah. Oh. There it is. I may need to come here for this event. So, <laughs> the I wasn't gonna until I saw yeah. it. The the ooze. I got things to That's do. That's cool. That glows in the dark. No. Yes. He's excited about the event. He's so happy to be back out on the West Coast. Oh. And this is his West Coast return debut. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people that didn't get the other three colors because they just sell out so quickly. I mean, yeah. honestly, so, like we have like a little more than like I think a hundred pieces of these. They're gonna go, yeah. and they go for a hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Jack? It's still totally, coming to totally, the event. No, totally worth it for that. I mean, <laughs> like look at it, the paint, the, the texture, the weight of it, all of it. Yeah. It's just it's amazing. So yeah, and shelf worthy, shelf worthy, oh, yeah. for sure. Shelf worthy! See, he did it again. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? It's hello, chill. Hello, I'm on a But it's not down you. here, it's up here. All right. Oh. Shelf worthy! Shelf worthy! Yay! Want a point? Yay. All right, there it is. We all pointed at it. Right. It's now <laughs> shelf worthy. All right. So I like it. I definitely, I, I mean, of course yeah, I this, like it. This That's is a great I, piece. So we love you, Alex. Can't wait to see you, man. Yay. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And uh, I take it you have a website or uh, Instagram? I don't. I have an Instagram, for sure. Oh, it's Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Instagram hand, thank you. That people can follow you. You, you post about your projects there yeah, and can sure. follow you. And, yeah. and if people need help, because, um, you know, there's a lot of people that watch the show that are like, how do I make my figure? How do I get a license? How do I, I mean, how do I do this stuff? How do I make this stuff if I really, one, have the money, two, have the time and the patience is like I need to talk to somebody that can actually help me out. Do you offer that? My PayPal is right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean yeah, I could definitely uh, help wherever I can for sure. I'm glad to assist. And of course, people can hire you for that kind of stuff as well. Nah, please do. <laughs> there you go. I don't need that. So right, so before you go, will you be so kind as to uh, do a little sketch in our sketchbook? Absolutely. Yeah. Does that Let's do it. Good? All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so we'll see you at Decon. Oh, yep. Decon. Decon's gonna be amazing. And uh, no, everyone no. else, don't forget to share and follow and post and leave a comment and do all that good stuff. We've only got like what four episodes four left episodes before the left season finale. Over. That's it. Season finale. Series. Season finale. Right, George? <laughs> Series. Series. It's just going to be Ben sitting here, episode episode one, 2.1. Uh, Hi, guys. But it'll be a live <laughs> Facebook video because he won't know how to use any of the cameras. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so it'll just be his phone. Like. <laughs> he doesn't know how to set anything up. It'll uh, just be a phone. Just, hi, guys. <laughs> here we are. I'm back I'm behind the sticky camera. I don't know what to do. Blair Witch Help Project me. style. <laughs> God. Amazing. Ugh. Well, thank you for joining us, man. This was thank great. You. Thank you for coming. Yep. Um, all right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. See you guys next week. Signing out.
Iceland. <laughs> <laughs>